Hey everyone, Eric with Rocket H, and I have an impromptu live today. Uh, it's Sunday, just September 6th, and uh, I had a request for a video on how to disassemble a W900, a DCP W900, one like this. And let me kill this air conditioner quick. There, now we don't have that noise. Anyway, uh, so uh, one of my viewers, uh, one of you guys, said, hey, can you make this video? And I thought, rather than do a proper vi video where I edit it and do all these other things, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, just do a quick teardown uh, live. So if you have any questions as we go along, you can ask. So uh, we're going to get straight to it, not waste a, uh, a lot of time. And here we go. So a um, couple of things we're going to need. Well, let me just tell you what I'm doing here so you understand exactly what's going on. One, um, like I said, I have this thing. Uh, a viewer asked me to take apart a W900L. Here we go. There's the W900L. But I actually I need this frame. I don't need the rest of this so much, but I do need this frame for a truck I'm doing. It's going to be a triaxle Kenworth. And, uh, and I need these parts. <laughs> so here's the deal. I got to have a a truck like this. Um, I don't need this frame, but I need these parts. And I need this frame, but not these parts. Now, before you ask, I'm not going to sell these parts because I have uh, one, two, three other Kenworth trucks to do this fall. So I'm going to end up using all these parts anyways. I'm just not going to use them for this particular build. So it's not uncommon for me to say, uh, to look at a truck, at a project I'm doing, and so I'll buy a truck like this because this is mostly what I need for this particular project, the wrong frame. And so I'll buy another truck, this one, because I need the frame, but not the rest of the parts. The sleepers are all wrong and the pipes are wrong. So if that kind of helps you understand my, the method to my madness, that's kind of the way I do things. So uh, we already have some comments coming in, so I'm going to say hey to Richter Farms. Good to see you. Ah, cool live stream. Well, welcome. Hope you, hopefully you get a lot out of it. Uh, right. So I, like I said, I've got three different Kenworth trucks to do uh, this, this fall. And um, yeah, well, let's just get to it. All right. Here we go. I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to point the camera here at my workstation. Here we go. I'm going to point this thing down just a little bit more. Dale says, what's up? Well, what's up is a little teardown video, Dale. Thank you for asking. Okay. So basically, we're going to take apart both of these, and I'm going to pull these fenders off because they're all wrong for the project I'm doing. I have parts bin, and you're saying, well, Eric, you already have some parts in there. Well, I'm not going to lie. I already had a sleeper on hand. So it's primed and ready to go once I get paint. So we're going to need uh, Phillips. We're going to need a side cutter like so. Um, we'll probably need something sharp, a pokey thing, and a knife to take this bad boy, these two bad boys apart. Here we go. So I usually start, well, there's really no reason to start. You start wherever you want. Uh, today I'm going to start, uh, actually, if you start at the sleeper, and Kenworth turnouts are different than Peterbilt turnouts. Uh, you can use them interchangeably, but they won't fit the same. So here we go. We're just going to take uh, this uh, bottom of the exhaust is pinned in place in how many places I forget. Oh, oh, broke it. That's okay. Because it's underneath, I don't get too carried away. I don't, I don't lose my mind if I break something on the bottom because how often do you turn these things upside down? Not very often. So there's one screw that's going to hold the sleeper in. And it wouldn't be uncommon for the airlines to be attached to the bottom of the sleeper. Uh, where'd my screw go? Here we go. Lately, I've been in a habit of putting the screws back in the plastic so I don't lose them. And then I don't have to guess which screw goes where. 
take the cab off. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have to pull this bumper off to get, there's inside of the hood, there is a firewall, on the firewall, there's a piece of plastic that's attached to the engine, which is what is making this difficult to take off. I went ahead and glued this herd bumper. Actually, I, I put this herd bumper on this cab just to take pictures of it for my website. That's why I bought the truck. And I thought I had a project coming up, which I didn't end up using this. Anywho, so I'm just take this off. I'm gonna try and salvage that herd bumper. Hopefully it doesn't break as I, actually, you know what? Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to take these pins out, see if I can weasel these dudes out, take the hood off. Okay, so we have that pin out. You can, the best way to take out DCP hood pins is to get you a sharp set of side cutters that have a flat side. Uh, I keep two styles around. This is more of a blunt style and this is a sharper one. These I kind of prefer, but I bought the, those were like, I don't know where I was, I was someplace and they were stupid cheap, so I was like, oh, well, I'll add them in. But see how I grab that? I just get right between the head of the pin with these flat-sided side cutters. They're good and sharp, and they'll slip right between that, and then you just wiggle those in. Uh, DC Digger Man says, what do I think, let me see here, what do I think is the easiest truck to customize? Oh, man, that's a great question. I mean, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. There we go. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I really like the T600 and T660 Kenworth uh, because there's lots of screws. Man, that just makes it so, so much easier. Where's my flat screwdriver? Here we go. Here we go. So right here on the firewall is this thing that's pinned in there. We're going to pull that out and then watch this. There goes the cab. Set that off to the side. And while we're at it, I'm going to stick this screw right in here. I wonder which one I should start with. Well, I'll tell you, you know, a lot of times if you're brand new to custom trucks, and the answer is for, let me see, who am I speaking with? I'm sorry. Doggone it. Uh, BC Diggerman. So this answer is intended for D DC BC Diggerman. But uh, for any of you watching, if you're brand new to customizing trucks, don't start out with one of these. Go get you a couple of Ertles. And because number one, they're cheap, and if you screw them up, who cares? I mean, you paid five, ten dollars for them. Whoop de do. Uh, and then work your way up. So. Um, I always recommend start at the bottom, work your way up, get some confidence, have some wins, do some things like that, and then work your way up to these more expensive trucks. I paid 65 for this, and I think it was about 68 shipped to my house, this green one here. And I bought this for parts, if that tells you anything. Okay, uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and take this all the way down uh, just because um, I'm going to need these parts eventually. So we're going to go ahead with this cab here. Haven't done anything to sleeper, haven't done anything to hood. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. This particular uh, cab floor is pinned in with tabs in the front and tabs in the back. And the tab in the front sometimes is a bit more shallow than the one in the back. This one's pretty long. Uh, often you can get a little screwdriver or some, a flat screwdriver in here and pry that out. Uh, a lot of times what I do is I just take my knife in here between the die cast and the plastic and pry it out. Uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes they don't, but there, here, I'm just twisting, breaking the glue, and the tab in the back, whoops, and that takes out the floor. After your floor is out, the cab should, or the interior and the T660 is, the interior all comes out in one piece rather than four separate pieces. That's what I like about those. And there's a screw in front to take out the floor and it's die cast which is a lot better in my opinion. The W900 has been around for a long time and so some of those advancements just have not been incorporated yet. To remove the interior, 
I'm taking my knife between the die cast and plastic, going ahead and getting in between there to break the glue. And then out it comes. Sometimes they come out in pieces. Uh, you can see the glue right here that held that in. And right there. See how I did that? Right between the die cast and the plastic, off we go. Whoop, and yeah, look at that. Okay, uh, right. You can take off the uh, air breathers a multitude of ways. I just hooked them with my bent plier and pried them off. Most of the time, it'll save those pins on there. Sometimes they don't come off, sometimes they do. Um, if you buy these trucks brand new, and I bought this one brand new, it came with an extra set of mirrors. However, I do try to save them, and I'm grabbing that with my bent plier. Gently, gently prying that up. Trying to save those mirrors, because I just like to do that. Oop, that one's going to be stubborn. And I'm, Oh, I didn't break it. Wait. Oh. Yeah, I broke that one. Okay, since I broke it, now we're just going to... Go ahead and toss it. These hand grabs on the side. Get your knife in between there and just twist it up. And that'll keep you from bending them. And if you do bend them, it's not the end of the world. It's just slightly inconvenient. This thing comes off, that little mirror there. Sometimes it'll come out with the pin. Ooh, look at that, I kept the pin. I was going to say, most of the time I break them. Yeah, it stinks, but it's the way it goes. Um, this little side window here. A lot of times, what I'll do is I find a blunt, soft end of uh, anything like this. And I just push that out. Somehow, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's find a different tool. Okay, that didn't work. Try another one. I know I have one out here I normally use, I just don't see it handy. There it goes, that window. And put that over yonder. Whoops. Next, where are we at here? I'm gonna push this window out. If, rats. If you screw this window up, don't fret. Golly molly, it's in there. Oh, well, there goes the visor. Yeah, it's slowly coming out. If you screw this back window up, don't fret, because guess what? If you put a sleeper back on it, you won't even know it's there. So, if you ever wanted to make one of these a day cab, um, all you have to do is pull the sleeper off, and guess what? You have a day cab. Reattach your glass, boom, you're done. Okay, so we have the window out in the back. We have the windshield. The visor came off of its own cord. We have the, we about have this done. Oh, and then the roof cap ceiling. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. Uh, we're gonna grab, kind of get in between the plastic and the die cast. I guess you can see that, perfect. Maybe we'll get in there. You can try it from the front or the back. As, uh, provided you take out that little glass that we just did. Okay, and there it goes. Okay, let's take a look at questions and comments quick. Uh, let's see, um, green light is also reasonably priced. Yes, that's right. Check out a green light, do an Ertl, do anything. Um, just start out, if you're brand new, start out with an uber cheap truck, add some parts to it because it costs you very little and if you screw up, it doesn't hurt you. Rather than spending 65 on a cab, you spend 10 or 20 and just kind of work your level up. Peterbilt 379, hello, just joining, welcome, welcome. All right, the roof cap on this bad boy is riveted in. So, we're gonna get a drill bit and a drill, and we're gonna put that, we're gonna get that out. So, I've got a, an oversized drill bit. Wow, look at that, it popped right out. Okay, well done, sweet. Uh, some of them come out much easier than others. That one, as you saw, just whoop, there it went. 
I'm going to take a sharp object here. I have a screwdriver with a point. I'm going to push the bottom end of that pin for the air horn out. Did you hear it pop? That's what we want. So you can actually see how I pop that air horn out right there. Okay, that one's not coming out quite as easy, no worries. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that pin off. There we go. So I just kind of cut the mush plastic around there, so now I can get, hopefully I can get in there. Let's see. Come on. It's amazing how hard you have to push on some of those at the time. God, what a mess that thing comes out. Okay, that one's out. Pop goes the weasel. Okay, let's pop that one out. Can we get it? It is amazing you have to push so hard on that sometimes. I just find that completely crazy. It's plastic. You know, we're not. That is insane. All right, I'm going to have to cut this back one off too. Come on, let go. There, there it goes. All right. Goal is to save those parts. Totally want to save those. Okay, next. I'm going to push this window out here. Pop and. Pop. And we've saved that piece of glass, or plastic anyway. Okay, roof cap is done. All we have left now is the windshield. And we will get to cracking. So I often try to start with the top. There is a pin here for the windshield. Maybe you can get in that, push that out. Okay, that's not working so well. Fine. Get our screwdriver in here. We're just going to grab that and twist that thing out. I wish there was a better way to teach what I'm doing right here. Uh, regrettably, you just kind of got to get in there and make a mistake or two. Or, if uh, you gravitate to it better than I do, Maybe you won't make any mistakes. Okay, already I can tell this is gonna be a pain. See how this piece, uh, this white here is showing up? That means uh, I bent that plastic and that white showed up. Right along here is a bead of glue. You can kinda, of, well I can see it, I don't know if you can right here, but there's a bead of glue uh, from the factory. Sometimes <laughs> these little die cast trucks you know, I don't know who assembles them or who's calibrating the machinery, but sometimes they say, let's use lots of glue today. And then you have these troubles. So I got my knife in between the die cast and plastic, just trying to cut that glue out without screwing up my windshield. Are we gonna get it? See if we can twist. Can we twist? Oop, there it goes. And hallelujah, we saved it without screwing it up. I scored the plastic just a little bit, but not bad. This will be okay. That we can work with. Okay, these parts are done. Next, we have the sleeper. We're going to go ahead and take this all the way down. There's two rivets holding this plastic floor in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drill those out. Okay, so can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay. I've been teaching my daughter how to drive, and I say, sweetheart, go slow. It's not a race while you're learning. So this die cast is the same. It's not a race. You don't get any prizes for doing it faster than the next guy. Take your time. Ah. 
little bit will wander off that plastic head. Um, if any of you have a better idea on how to do this than I've got it, I'm all ears. Okay. Okay, that one's gone about. Okay, well, luckily, if you do muck up the bottom, don't worry about it. You're gonna have it hidden from view. Okay, now that's done. Okay, now that we have uh, the floor out, we can go ahead and work on the windows, trying to get those out. So we'll just start with the top. And I do encourage you, if you don't have a good sharp knife, get one and cut the bottom pieces of those pins out like I'm doing here. That does seem to make life a little better. Also from the inside of this sleeper, there will be little pieces of plastic that just Sometimes they'll come out without any effort at all. If you go ahead and do this one step, it takes you about no time, just a few seconds. And we'll get this one way up here. Okay. Well, let's start here on the side. I don't like to push on this plastic too much because it's easy to score. And and ruin. Come on, Lego. Okay. You kind of see it wants to come out. All we have to do is be careful, careful. All right, those two came out. So I'm gonna go through that window and try and push this one out on the side here. There it goes, there's part of it, okay. These little dudes here I find are really tricky to take out. You can already see here, I pushed on this pin and over here it's starting to bend the plastic. So now what I'm going to do is grab a rag or a piece of anything, kind of blunt this end and push on the plastic from the inside out. Now you don't have to, this actually isn't long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and use a regular screwdriver. So I'm going to use something blunt to soften that edge. And let's see if i got a rag here handy. And I do. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get a rag in here and see if that will work. That. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, 
Still not working. All right, let's try this. Okay, get it tool. These windows are probably one of the more difficult things to remove on one of these trucks without breaking them. Guys, find they're very challenging to take out. Oh, this is not wanting to come at all. Hmm. Okay. On the inside, it's actually narrower on the inside than it is on the outside because there's a groove right here that holds that plastic in place and that is really narrow in the inside of this cab. So you see how that came out? It's kind of scored right there a little bit. You can kind of see there. That's not the best, but whew, I find them just difficult to take out. There's not a great way. Hopefully you take them out without breaking them up. Um, one thing you can do that may help you out a lot, and already see I broke the, the little bit of that, so I'm going to try and take that out because I'm going to have to reuse this because I don't have another one. Hmm. Why well, just got stuck on my eyelid? Huh, crazy. Push that out. Oh, I was going to say, um, I've mentioned this before in my videos, if you've watched very many of them, that one way to aid in disassembly is to stick these in the freezer and uh, just freeze them for like 24 hours. And the reason to do that is it will make the glue brittle. And so some of those glues that hold all these parts in gets really really easier much easier to take out I did not obviously do that here okay there we go well hopefully you saw that what I was doing there uh, okay and then we got these pins here in the back these are just hand grabs oh I lost one didn't I if you lose one don't worry you can remake these with straight pins golly lost two all right Actually, I have quite a few of those stored up somewhere. Okay. Now, we'll do the uh, hood, and we will have number one done. So I'm going to go ahead and right here, there is mushed plastic right here and here. That hold these, these two pieces on. Go ahead and cut that away. Okay. Then there's also this mush plastic right here on the back side of these turn signals. And then there's a little peg right here I like to cut off for the headlights. Now the hardest part of the hood is to take these without breaking them. So we'll go, and I do not know why these are so hard, so difficult to take off, but they are. Uh, some 
somebody get really nuts of glue. Boy, and look at that. I'm a liar today, huh? Save both pins. Woohoo! Yay! Wow. That's unusual for me. Okay. I broke that one a little bit, but it's still there. And now we can do the grill, headlights, and turn signals. Uh, for the grill, I'm just going to go between the plastic and the die cast. And lift that away. Come on, let go. Um, this piece of screen right here is also supposed to come off. Just get your sharp knife and go in between that. Come on. Okay, I'm going to get a sharper knife here. Uh, where's my finger cutter? Here it is. Oh, come on, you let go. There it is. So now, if you can see in there, I'm between that screen and the die cast. I'm gonna work this knife. There is a pin right here behind this red emblem. And all I'm doing here is just kind of twisting my knife a little bit, breaking the glue. Ah, there we go breaking the glue so it comes out. And you can see how that paint and glue here is kind of hung up right there. You can scrape that off. Put your part in. See? There we go. And actually, this comes out too. I don't know why you'd ever take it off, but it does come out. Okay, finally, we're going to do some headlights and the signals, and this one's done. Headlight number one. Pushing that out. There it goes. Pushing that. There it goes. Perfect. And turn signal. Pushing that out. There it goes. That one's out. And... Shoot. That one hit the floor, but luckily I found it. There's our two turn signals right there. Okay, put those in there. Okay, this dude is tore down and ready for paint stripper. Why don't we just do that since we're here together? Okay, here's... Uh, you can already see I've got some other parts in there. So we'll just stick that in there. Oh, and a frame. There's a frame in there somewhere. A couple of... Oh, wow, look at that. I forgot I had all those parts in there. Huh. So these have been setting in the paint stripper since what is today, Saturday. Uh, no, today's Sunday, Friday night. I did a bunch of work Friday night, and, uh, and so I just left town and then left them in there. Okay, so that is done. This bad boy is ready to rock and roll. Um, so this frame is going to go with, actually, the parts on this cab. i got to strip this one down, get it cleaned up, and then get it ready for paint stripper. And, uh, and then all those parts here are going to go on this cab for uh, another project. So I won't go ahead and tear that one down because uh, you've seen the process now. And I will get the camera turned around. So if you have any more questions for me... Uh, we'll go ahead and answer this quick. Here we go. And I'll see what has come up since... Okay. Uh, Peterbilt 79 says... Oops. Prices are crazy on DCPs lately. I'm up to 16 now. Guess... Oh, shoot. Guess I'm not helping... Do you have a collection of stock trucks or all yours custom? Uh, about everything I have is custom, uh, mostly because I've wanted specific things. And if you see right behind me on that wall, 
that is about everything I have, less about 20 pieces. Uh, and they're all custom. Do I have anything stock on that one? I do. The Pro Star is mostly stock. It's just got a herd bumper on it. The two W or 379 Pete's on the uh, fourth row up and on the, well, I guess on this side toward the door, there's a cream and blue one and then a maroon one with uh, gold on it or you know, whatever. Those two are stock. So those there's three stock, three trucks that are basically stock and the rest of them. Oh, I guess those Max over there, the Max are all stock. Um, I didn't do anything to them. I bought them cheap. They were 20 bucks a piece. I bought tractor trailers. They are first gear Mac granites, I guess. I don't know. I bought a case of them with a guy, and they were 20 bucks each. And it's like, pfft. I just need something to go in front of silage trailers. They were cheap, and I bought them. So me and a, a friend of mine and I, we bought them together, a case of them. Just stupid cheap. So, uh, and Pro Star, they're all stock. And the rest of them are all custom in some fashion. Um, I got some Fords. Smell 9000s that are all custom. I've got a couple C660s in a box down here. Other than that, everything else is... Uh, yeah, that, and basically that's the lion's share of my collection. Uh, I really enjoy customizing, so I just do a ton of that for other people. Okay, let's see. What other comments do we have? Okay, I guess that's it. All right. Well, uh, hopefully you got something out of this tutorial. If you want to see step-by-step -step guides and have more access to me, go ahead and go to the Diecast Lab because uh, over there, that's my membership site. And I have everything itemized nice and neat and clean and some other goodies to go with it. So check out Diecast Lab if you haven't. And what else? I guess that's it. I, mean, I got just a ton of projects coming up and uh, it's gonna be fun. So be watching my channel and my Facebook page and things and you can catch up with me. Everett Clear says, hello, nice to hi back. All right, cool. Well, guys, I got stuff to do, so I'm going to get to work. And you guys have a great Sunday afternoon and a great, hopefully, relaxing Memorial Day weekend. We'll see you.